Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Tonight, I have the great pleasure. It's actually your second time, Mr. Sambala, on the podcast, so I appreciate you coming back. Thanks for having me. Alongside uh, Mr. Nick Szymanski from Chase. They call you Nikki Chase, I heard. Nikki Chase and Dreams, helping you chase your dreams. (laughs) I appreciate you taking the time to come out today. Thank you, Um, Introduce yourself to the audience, and then we'll kind of get right into things. Sure. Uh, Nick Szymanski, um, I'm a business banker with J.P. Morgan Chase Business Bank, located right here in beautiful Melville, Long Island. Uh, been, been a resident of Long Island since 2005, grew up upstate New York, a small town called Liberty, New York in the Catskill Mountains, nice. beautiful mountains, a lot of snow, 10, 15 degrees colder than, than Long Island, but... Colder than now? Colder than now, colder than now. Actually, snow. I think they got eight inches recently, oh, so, wow. uh, oh, so things are um, a little different up there. Grew up on a mountain, 200... 250 acres of land, woods. Um, Different world up there. Yeah, spent my spent my childhood uh, riding quads and dirt bikes and oh, racing through nice. the woods, building tree forts, taking out my uh, pellet guns and 22s, and uh, you know, doing a little uh, safety hunting, hunting safety, you know, hunter yeah, safety yeah. course. Is that what they call it? Uh, hunter safety. I think so. I I didn't pass the class. Wait, so I thought I thought you guys grew up together. So you guys. No, no, we didn't grow up. Well, we, we kind of grew up together in the business world, I would say. Okay. But uh, we became friends, close friends, very close, um, probably 10 years ago. Nice. And uh, we met through a networking function awesome. called BNG, okay. which is, stands for Business Network Group. And um, we both walked into this boardroom together and we're uh, young, handsome, energetic guys that wanted to uh, change the world and, and make some money and do good for, for good people, of you course. know, and clients, build clients. And, yep. uh, you know, so we, through a series of meetings, we realized that uh, we're kind of separated from birth, brothers from another mother. Yep. So uh, similar we, mindsets, yeah, similar, similar mindsets, yeah. goals, and, uh, yeah. you know, like to do the same things, hit the gym, play basketball. Um, Something I wanted to talk about. So you into the fitness you into the fitness thing I am I am I love uh, fitness and and um, smart diet you know eating healthy and stuff and uh, you know um, has that always been a part of you, a part of your life like going to the gym or when when did that uh, when did that you didn't start that? really until after high school okay I got in, I got more into the gym and I had a couple buddies that were, were gym guys and they were older than me so they kind of took me under their wing and taught me about uh, how to work out the right way, how to diet, eat a lot of protein, get get good sleep, you know. And uh, you talk to, to any uh, of those guys from the past? Still? Yeah. The guys who kind of like mentored you and, you know, gym, routines? Uh, I would say one of them. Okay. You know, the other guys kind of unfortunately didn't take the right um, path or, or journey, you know, right. so we kind of lost connection there. Um, what, do you, what do you think about that in life? I feel like sometimes you grow up with, because you bring up a, a good point there. Yeah. I feel like sometimes you grow up with people in life and I... I feel like this is what people sometimes have the hardest part in doing is letting go of those people that might not be on the same, not even path, but the same mission or have the same mindset as you. Correct. I feel like a lot of people have a hard time, yeah. you know, letting those people go. And maybe it's not letting them go. Right. Maybe it's just, you know, there's a time and a place for everything in life. And right now, you know, you might have a different mindset than those people. And it's hard to have those people kind of in your, in your circle. They yeah. might not push you to yeah. do the right thing or the best thing. Yeah, and that's a great question, Dean, because um, I would say it was my parents that always taught me to surround yourself with winners and, and guys that would uh, influence you to level up and become better than you were yesterday. And that's always my goal is uh, to compete with the guy in the mirror and be better than I was yesterday. And it's hard. You have to have that disciplined approach. But um, I'm a guy who I, I, I strongly believe has a great heart and always wants to help people. Um, but people have to help themselves and you have to pull yourself up from shitty situations and become stronger. And everybody in this world has some type of issue or problem they're facing and you got to make the smart decision. And when you're in the mix and in those trenches and hard times, you know, you, you do have to rely on your closest friends and family to, to help you get through it and their advice and encouragement and support system, because without them, you can sometimes become doubtful and, and suicidal. You know, you don't you don't know sometimes. You know, I, that brings me back to some feelings, some certain hard times that I went through in my yeah, life, and yeah, of course. you know, and uh, without you. those people that the, that that support system, I might not not have made it. You yeah. know what I mean? And and it made me to become stronger yep. and better than I was yesterday. But yeah, at some point, like you asked, with those friends, when when you're constantly encouraging them and trying to give them the right 
um, the right advice and the right path to take, if they, if they consistently are falling by the wayside and not taking you serious, you got to move on. Maybe it's not them taking themselves serious. It's like sometimes I feel like people don't handle constructive criticism in the right way. It's almost like they think it's, it's you versus them, but it's not. Right. It's out of a place of caring about that person that, you know, maybe you gave them advice about something they were doing or, you know, they were going through a challenge in their life. And mm -hmm. sometimes people take that the wrong way, especially a friend. Yeah. They might not want to hear the truth from, from you or from someone else. And, yeah. you know, that, that hurts friendships or relationships sometimes. Yeah. But I, I, I know myself, not that I've been through everything in life because I definitely have and I continue to learn every day and I've gone through adversity and, you know, continue and will continue to go through adversity. But, you know, it's what I've learned so much from it is how you deal with those situations is really what shows who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, I always used to wear my heart on my sleeve growing up and I mm -hmm. still do. Mm -hmm. And you take certain situations personal. And once you realize that it's how you, again, like I said, handle those situations from what I'm starting to realize you know, that's what makes you the person that you truly are. Yeah. You know, anybody could take a situation and go south. Right. But once you learn how to deal with adversity and take that and let it drive you forward, you know, uh, you could accomplish anything in life, in my, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah so. absolutely. I mean, you make a great uh, point mm -hmm. talking about friends yeah. and family. But bottom line is, there's only so much we could do to help. But you have to want to help yourself. Right. Correct. And that's where... Yep. And that's where yeah, and that's where there's a fine line between what your circles of influence can do and coach and teach, and then as far as it all comes down to you and your mentality. And it's so easy to focus on the negative things around us, right? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. easy to do that, but you can also change your outlook and focus on the positive things. Right. And right. Change a negative into a yeah. positive. And you know, there's, there's yep. a lot of uh, super achievers out there to where they say, Meditation is extremely important, and they say that each person should meditate at least 10 to 20 minutes a day. And the saying is, if you feel like you're too busy, you should meditate for an hour. Wow. So, I've heard a lot about that yeah. lately, the meditation, journaling, doing certain things that I would never think to do those things. That doesn't make me any, anything. I just never thought that those are things that you should implement you know, into your daily routine that... Yeah you know, might help you become, like you said, the best version of yourself yeah, because sure. mm -hmm. how are you going to help other people? And I feel like that's why, I know that's why I do what I do and why a lot of us do what we do. It's to help other people. And, yeah. you know, speaking about some of the stuff we speak about on this podcast, the reason I love it so much now is because even like, you know, talking about something that you just talked about, you know, going through challenges in life. And if you don't have that right support system by you, you know, you might not make it or you might not get to a certain point. You know, that's really what, you need that around you. You need the people yep. in your life that are going to lift you up and that are there for mm -hmm. you, you know, during the darkest times. Yep. Some people don't have that. They don't. Some and people and don't it's hard to make it through without those people. Yeah. You know, very I've hard. heard stories where you, you yeah. lose parents, you lose... It takes a lot of strength. Member, and those people have nobody around yeah. them to, to help them get through that time. And That's tough. Yeah. And that's when you want to be an even better friend to those type of yeah. people and be there for them. Uh, I know without the people in my life that if I have an issue and I went through some bad stuff here and there, yeah. two bad, really bad events that if I didn't have that support system, I might've crumbled, you know, yeah, and I always want to be there for my kids in the event. I was going to say, so you have kids. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have uh, three kids, you know, uh, two boys and a girl and uh, they're great. You know, uh, two are from a previous marriage, uh, you know, which, which failed, but uh, you know, uh, that was a tough time, but um Again, with, with the right support structure, I was able to push through and persevere and, and get to a much happier, better place than I'm at now than I was back then. Right, and you could have and you could have stayed down and out. Could've you could have played victim, yeah. have everybody feel bad for you, but right. you made a choice. Yep, yep. I got rid of that, that, those, that phrase, I feel bad, because it makes no sense. And, and everybody has problems, and... People will listen to your problems, but enough is enough. If, right, you, right. if you told the story 10 or 20 times, yep. drop it and, and move up, on. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, a tough point. Now, you know? do, you think, do you think it shaped you out to be, like, a better father, a better professional? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I definitely feel stronger-minded now and wiser than I was. Um, and, you know, I'm a big believer in that say saying when you're – too good, you're no good. You know what I mean? When you're too good. And I felt like back then in that period of my life, I was too good. 
and kind of got walked on a bit and um, and wasn't, um, I, guess, I don't know if the word is aggressive, but as reactive as I should have been and stuff. And uh, for me personally, I didn't grow up on Long Island. I have family that is that live upstate New York and in Pennsylvania. So when I was at a, forced to leave my house, I had nowhere to go on Long Island. So some some guys or ladies would have went right back to their parents or, or bolted, you know. But I could never leave my kids. You know, they're the most important people to me, you know. And uh, I had to stay on Long Island and and find an apartment. Luckily, I connected with a past friend and colleague that I worked with at Bank of America back in like 2006. And this guy lived five minutes away from my kids, and he had owned a house, and he had an apartment that was going to be vacant. And he's like, dude, he's like, come, this is yours. You know, you can live here. It's five minutes from your kids. It's it's a great area, great school district. And uh, so it was all timing, and everything in life is timing. I, I Everything in life I've been taught is about timing, being at the right place at the right time, and that's in your personal life and in business. But uh, I, I tell you, it was... Uh, stressful then and I went into a little bit of depression I was working uh back then for Flushing Bank and um I remember I couldn't sleep that that well I couldn't eat as as much and stuff and I lost 20 pounds wow. and um HR at the bank called me in to uh the office and they were like Nick your suits they're, they're falling off of you you know what I mean and are you okay I, pr I probably had deep bags under my eyes and stuff and um you know, at some point, you know, I, it was so stressful. You wanted to go to like tears, but you know, you got to fight through it. Was this after you, know? you said you got divorced the first time? It was probably going through the process. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was going through the process, and um, you know, it was tough. It, it broke my heart knowing that uh, you know I had to accept not waking up in the same house as my kids. Yeah. You know, every day. You know, but uh, that's a that's that's a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah. It's a tough one. But. Um, you know, again, you got to spin it to a positive and going through that shit brought me to a much happier place um, after a period of, of rebuilding myself and uh, really digging down to figure out who is Nick Szymanski and where did I come from right. um, and relying on my, my closest family and friends, I became stronger. You know, when I got my ass back to the gym and um, I enjoyed life more, I smiled. And I always said there was something like, uh, you know, you're coming out of it when you're not just l listening to the music. You can hear the music right. and you could hear the words and everything, like everything's starting to make sense. And uh, luckily, after um, having some fun for a period of uh, maybe about two years being single, uh, God pointed me in the right direction to my current wife, my, my final wife, <laughs> and uh, she's a great lady, a great partner, and um, she makes life better, and we laugh a lot, and we have a beautiful baby boy now, and, uh, and things are, are awesome. Things are going in the right direction. That's, ama that's amazing. So, that's awesome, brother. To, God uh, bless. Thank you. To go back, like, what was it? You know, what was it like gr growing up? You know, because I know, like, yeah. my, my parents were divorced growing up, and yeah. you know, my my daughter. I don't live with my daughter now, and you know, like you said, the hardest part about, or one of the hardest part, it has to be the hardest part about separating from a situation like that is not waking up in the same house as your child. Yeah, you know, it's something that until you're faced with that and until you deal with that yourself, yep. you know, it's really not. You can't really explain, you know, how it feels. Yeah, and that's something that's kind of new for me as well. Yep. Um, how was you know how was your childhood growing up? Were your parents together or what? yeah? So uh, so when I was a baby, six months old, my biological father left my mother and I. Just got up and left, and uh, he found another lady. Took off. Okay, six months old. So it was kind of uh, you know I was a baby. I don't remember a lot, but uh, never met the guy. He called me once when I was in eighth grade. Eighth one time, grade. eighth grade. I was by then uh, my mother had re had remarried. And uh, my dad, who raised me, is the best guy I know. He was the best man at my wedding um, to my final wife. Uh, but great, great guy. Taught me to be the man I am. Um, I can only hope to be as good as him, yeah. you know. And uh, um, so my, my biological father, he called me in eighth grade. I was living upstate New York in, in Liberty. And uh, I remember back then, 
you could you picked up a phone. Th- there was house phones. There wasn't cell phones. Yeah. So so my mother picked up the phone and I picked up the phone upstairs and I could hear him talking. And she, you know it was like uh, you know uh, she was like well what do you want type of thing and he was like oh, I want to talk to Nick and blah, blah and she was like well you could talk to him because he's on the phone. He picked up the phone and she and then he got like all nervous and quiet and you know so then she kind of hung up. Let us talk. We had a little talk and I was big into basketball back then, the eighth grade. And stuff. I played for the school. I played modified basketball, and uh, he so he sent me a gift. He was living in California, so he sent me all like UCLA gear, like uh, shorts from the college and a jersey, and mm-hmm. and I think he sent me a, a pair of sneakers. And was supposed to make plans to come from California to upstate New York to visit and first meet for the first time when I was in eighth grade. So uh, that kind of didn't go anywhere. You know, he didn't show up, didn't return calls. Um, and it is what it is. And uh, people ask me a lot that know me close, like, oh, you know, you, you ever worried or think about it or miss him? And the truth is no, because guess what? You didn't have the time for me, so I don't got the time for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you know, if he called you tomorrow, yeah. he called you tomorrow morning, and you saw it as like an unknown caller coming in because that could be a referral and you take that call, you know, how would you handle that? I would ask him why, like, like, and I would relate it back to me. Like why now? Right. Like why, why not? Or, or why even, not? Why were you just not around? Yeah. Did that, you really that, just well, that would, care? Yeah. Right. Why did you take off like that? And look, marriage, Mar- parent now, right? Yeah. yeah forget. I'm a, I, again, as I mentioned, I'm on my second and final marriage. <laughs> um, and mar- <laughs> marriage is hard. Marriage is hard. It's a very hard thing. You know, you got to be in it together. You have to accept the faults. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. But whatever issue him and my mother had was their issue. He shouldn't have had an issue with me. You know what I'm saying? And he, and he missed out. And like in my ex- uh, example, where I didn't have any family on Long Island and I could have bolted to upstate New York or PA or went to Miami or wherever I wanted to go. I could never leave my kids. God forbid they got into an accident or needed me or whatever. I needed to be there. So as a man, you know, I would say, why? Like, what was going on in your head? Was we on drugs? Yeah. I, don't, I, I know you got involved with another woman. Okay. You know, I don't know how that turned out, whatever. But, uh, but yeah, it's... Um, very confusing to me. Like, I don't get it, you know, but... Uh, now, do your kids ever ask about it or... Uh, yeah, good question. Um, no, they never ask really about it. Very rarely do they bring it up because mm-hmm. um, they consider the dad that raised me their, their grandfather, yeah. which the best. Which he is, But yeah. he is, he is the, he is the positive spin, ready, is my biological father's older brother lives in Westchester and I have a great relationship with his older brother, his family, my cousins, which are older than, than me, you know, uh, but great people, complete opposite of what he was. And um, they're great. I stayed with them for a summer while taking uh, college classes in, in Westchester. Uh, great people. Um, my uncle, who's older than my biological father, t- sat me down and was like, Nick, uh, and he knows my dad that raised me. He's like, you're way better off with the dad that raised you than his own brother. Wow. Wow. You know, so That's that, powerful stuff. Powerful. You know? So, uh, that so you f- know, you're blessed regardless. Great mom, yeah. great dad, yeah. great family, yeah. talk great about, kids now. Talk about turning a negative, you know, mindset into a positive or a negative situation into a positive mindset, like you said before. I mean, mm. uh, f- most people, like you said in life, or like I said before in life, would just take something like that and go backwards. And to be able to get through a situation like that, I mean, how had you when that happened? When he called, when you were in eighth grade, mm-hmm. what did like? Do you remember like with your mom and stuff? Like how how did that? Was it just like kind of blown over after it happened, or like what? Well, yeah, good question. Uh, I know I was like nervous talking to him and kind of like. Scared, I guess. I I was a kid, you know, kid in eighth grade. And, uh, you know, um, I know she had a negative tone towards him, uh, you know, after all those years. Yeah, yeah. Eighth grade. How old are we? We're like 12 or 13 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And And, and also, too, I would say for me personally, you guys might agree. There's a lot of new things going on when you're at that age, too. 12 and 13, you know, a lot of a lot of different emotions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think this? You think that whole that whole situation had to make you realize, like, as a father, how how do you think it changed you 
as a father. It just made you. I wanted to be like, better. Be better. Be better. I wanted to be like the dad always that raised me, and I, I leaned on through my divorce, which did mess me up pretty good. Um, I leaned on him for like everything, you know, to to times where I wanted to fight and retaliate, and got him on the phone and was like, you know, smartened me up. You know, you're just going to end up in handcuffs and blah, blah, blah to times, you know, where I, I wanted to celebrate things. You know, I would always include him, you know, and considered him my uh, my go to and kind of best buddy. You know, what I mean, that would uh, be there for me as, as he always has, you know. Um, so that support structure is is huge, you know, and, t and turning the negative into a positive um, leads you to become, I think, better overall for growth. Yeah. You know? And I'll tell you, as far as, I guess, the opposite way that your biological father was, like, from getting to know Nick and just, like, the power of networking, right, from a networking group. Right. We just kind of just hit it off, similarities, you know, business, go-getters, the whole nine. And I would say as far as, like, from knowing Nick and his schedule and his routine with his kids... I know on Mondays and Wednesdays, if there's a networking function or if there's an event, Nick can't go if it's after work. Because I know between that 5 to 7 or 5 to 8, he spends time with his kids. That's number one on his list. Yep. So I know. I don't even have to ask. Sometimes I will just to kind of throw it out there. But I know that that's how important his kids are to him. So it just kind of shows mm. how just your kids – Everything's revolved around your kids. Priority, yeah. yeah. And that's a great point because even before coming here, <laughs> we were they took me, drug me to this uh, old school diner, which, you know, <laughs> didn't really have the, that healthy eats that I was looking for, but I sucked it up and got what was the most healthy thing on the menu. But I'm uh, still hungry. But, yeah, they, I was like, guys, you know, I have another meeting after this. They, You're kidding me? You, why did you come? Like, you know, we, you could have put us off. And I was like, no, I want to see you guys. I love you guys. You know, have some fun. Sometimes they annoy the shit out of me. But, you know, it's, you know, they, they're good kids overall and uh you know they couldn't believe that i had one more meeting i had to head to talk to some buddies and have a good show over here and uh and now they're gonna see dad on youtube they're gonna be like yeah. wow dad's a big deal yeah. he's on youtube oh, now yeah, yeah. made it yeah let's mike go. let's uh let's go back to your story a little bit all I right know, uh what do you got not that i know growing up you you know, you got into business like I did at a young age into the into the mortgage business. Yep. But you said even you dealt with some adversity, you know, in your twenties. You know, with whether it was working or so, whatever yeah. it was in life. So, so when I was when I was in college at uh, eighteen into nineteen, Are you dancing back then like you do now. <laughs> when I was seventeen, I got a job at ET Entertainment Tonight, yes. which is wow. located in Belmore. So I was a dancer, professional dancer, not exotic. <laughs> I was I was just a dancer and uh and I did just a lot of just weddings, bar mitzvahs, sweet sixteens, stuff like that. That's when I learned choreography. That's how you became you know, so I was personal. Like, I was like I was like, Whoa, whoa, you're supposed to count when you do this stuff? So that's that's when I learned dancing and then uh was going to college and uh was just really all about just trying to make money mm -hmm. as well, right? It was money and girls at the time, right? Yeah. And then uh and then it just it just got to the point to where uh, I wanted to work. So as I was going to school, I was also on my downtime. I was one of the guys who walked on 110, Hempstead Turnpike, Old Country Road. They used to put me everywhere. Merrick Road. And I was 18, 19, walking around with a bag, going from door to door, selling laser levels, radios, all crazy kind of crap. Wow. And that's what taught me rejection rejection so that's that's what that's what i needed to learn to embrace and one of the things that they taught you is when it says no soliciting on the door you walk right in there and the basic <laughs> pitch was i got items for 80 percent off i don't know if you could use it but it's a great deal 80 percent. and then some people would tell you to go f yourself you sound convincing can't you read the sign you know but every now and then when you walked into the no soliciting you'd have hey kid what's in the bag and then I'd start with the normal pitch with the laser level or this or that. And uh, that's, that's, that's what really helped mold me into just being a great salesperson. Because you're dealing with different personalities. You're face-to-face. -face, you know, and you're also walking into places that you're not supposed to, right. technically. But that's from that door-to-door -door sales when I was 18 or 19. That's what actually allowed me to uh, get recruited left and right. 
life insurance, you know, mortgages, anything, anything you could think of that's sales related. And I remember that a gentleman who stuck out between all the cards, I had a stack of huge cards and I'll never forget the gentleman who told me, kid, you are in the wrong business. <laughs> and then he's like, when you're serious about making a career for yourself, give me a call. And then he went, had me walk inside. He pretty much bought everything in my bag, took out a <laughs> stack of cash, bought everything in my bag. And then he started turning around and he hit me with the basic. And I was 19, hit me with, Anthony, how much you make last month? Steve, how much you make last month? Mike, how much you make last month? He's like, you said the laser levels. I can find them in Home Depot for 20 bucks, but you got them on sale for 9 dollars How much you make off one of those? Four bucks. <laughs> so that put it into sell, perspective sell a lot of levels. real quick to where he's like, you must have to sell a lot of those to make some money. Huh? <laughs> so that's, nice. that's what kind of helped me just kind of get involved into sales and also lose the fear of rejection because deep down inside, none of us want to be rejected, no. right? It's a shitty feeling, but it's also part of the course of success. Right. So that's why we get knocked down, we get up, but rejection is just a part of life. And the better that we can handle rejection mm -hmm. reduces our stress. And when we reduce stress in our life, it just makes us better overall people and just better characters Completely in life, agree. you know? So I don't have any kids like you guys, but, you know, I still have similar goals, right? The only difference is my life doesn't revolve around my kid because you guys are great dads. Not yet. So everything, everything revolves around, well, I'll tell you what, revolves around my dog a lot. <laughs> I, stay, I stay home in the morning just practice. to make sure, you know, but, but uh, at, the end, at the end of it all, it's just, it's just all about uh, just zeroing in and just going through day by day by day. And, uh, and yeah, and the mortgage, the mortgage business, uh, this, is, uh, this is the second time that uh, I went through a little bit of a crisis mode, I guess you can say, in, in the industry, because back in 2009... You were going to say, you got into it a bit right before then, and then that happened. I got in towards the end of the subprime boom. Yeah. So I went and I took a gentleman up on his offer back in like 2006. So that's when I dove in, cold calling 200, 300 calls a day, just keep dialing. And uh, six to nine was just, that's it. You had one hour, you got a five-minute break, hit the phones, and you would not leave until nine o'clock. Wow. So it's a long that day. was it. Yeah. That was it. And uh, we were just kind of programmed to, that's what successful people did. So uh, December 1st of 2009 is when uh, I was laid off for the first and only time. I remember walking in, guys with black suits at every exit, every, every entrance. And you went and you walked in and, and you were told, gather your personal belongings. All files, paperwork, everything is being federally investigated. Wow. So it needs to remain inside, inside there. So naturally you had guys trying like shoving paperwork <laughs> in their drawers and stuff like that just to get out. And but uh yeah, those that was that was a that was a pretty, pretty crazy time because I was twenty three. It's right before the holidays. So you start thinking all of those negative things because now the negative emotions start to pour out like, what am I going to do for the holidays? I was 23, living paycheck to paycheck. Now, granted, I was getting some nice checks, but it was all spent. Yeah. You know, the savings, it took, it, took, it took a few years to get to that savings point to where it's like, oh, wait, my dad was right. You know, you kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah, hit yourself first. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so as, as, as far as that was, that was definitely a, a difficult time because that financial crisis was a no-nonsense time, you know, and when you see the big players out there on Wall Street collapsing and then you're thinking everything's okay and you're being told everything will be okay and then you get laid off. Well, everything's not okay yeah. at that point. You never think so, of laid off in the mortgage, but you don't even think that that's a thing. Yeah, I, I had no idea. I'm like, wait, I got to collect that thing called unemployment now? Wait, how much are they giving me? Yeah. $417 a week? How can I pay rent? Yeah. You know, so that was, that, that was definitely uh, a kick in the ass as far as like a good reality check of stay humble. Yeah. Appreciate every single day. Mm -hmm. And it took a few months. You know, I was, I was in a bad place. But it took about a good six months and of when I finally was able to, like, get out of it. 
Yeah, I wouldn't take phone call. I wouldn't take phone calls from my mom, my dad. I was just like, who are telling me get a real job, get a real job now. You see, yeah, I find that isn't that so crazy how you as their their kid, you don't listen to their advice. Like, nah, nah, nah. You don't want to take their phone call, and it happens to me and my kids. You know, it's like, guys, I know better. I'm trying to put you on the best path. You got to listen up. You know, and my question to that, your your story there was looking back, what could you have done differently or better? Because from every experience like that, you got to learn, right? You don't lose, but you learn, right? How am I going to do this better in the future? Sure, absolutely. Well, my my whole thing was at that age, you know, I needed to grow up, right? There needed to be a sense of accountability and maturity. Right. Now, when you're 22, 23, living on your own, it forces you to grow at that point because the only time that you'll call mom or dad is when you need help and when you're in trouble. Yep. So that's what kind of caused me to man up. And it took months. It's just I should have manned up sooner. So mm -hmm. if you take me at my 37-year-old self right now and you put me in that situation, I'd probably come out of it with just within a few days. Yeah. Just because, just because, Just because I'm more accustomed to just dealing with the – turning a negative into a positive. Right. And then when a problem occurs, it's so much easier to blame everybody else. Right. Right. You could right. you could Point blame fingers. your mom, you could blame your girlfriend, you could blame the dog, you can blame your boss. It's so much easier to do that. So one of the big challenges for me was just understanding that when there's a problem mm -hmm. that there's no there's there's nothing beneficial that's going to come out of you blaming everyone. Right. Right? It's just going to make you feel good for the time being and your friends and your loved ones all listen. Right, but when that loved one calls you out on your shit, that's when it's time, right? Because now that person is doing what they're supposed to do, right? So, so that was that. That was a big. Uh, that was a big lesson, I would say, in that December first of two thousand nine. That I'll never forget. And you know, I kind of go back there to where, if things are in like a struggling, you know, like way, and it it kind of pulls me out of thinking along those lines because emotions know no reasoning. A wise man told me that. So when you're emotional, it's really hard to reason and to be 100% rational. So when you let the emotions kind of die down, then now you have the ability to make a better decision for you mentally and physically. Sure. So let me ask you this. You, you brought up as far as, um, you know, when you were in a dark place and everything, so, and you lost 20 pounds, HR calls you in. I mean, yeah. I mean that's, that's something, right? Yeah. So as far as... You brought up, once you were able to come out of it, you started going back to the gym. Mm -hmm. So it impacted you so drastically that a guy like you, who I know is all about just, just working out and staying active, that you stopped going to the gym? For a period of time, you know, because I was so drained and beat up, like mentally and emotionally, and kind of thought everything was my fault, because yeah. that's what was co being communicated to, to me by you know, my ex and, and, and her family, whatever, certain people. And uh, I guess I took on too much all at once, uh, being too accountable for everything. Like, wait a minute. And then I had to like peel it back and be like, this wasn't all my you fault. You were taking like all the responsibility and the blame just on you. On me and, and like getting beat up, beat up. And it was uh, the conversations I had with my dad and my mom and, you know, my sister was uh, a vital role there too, was we're going to be here to build you back up. You know what I mean? So call us whenever you want, and we're going to build you back up. Tell us, talk, and get it off your mind, and we'll talk this through together as a family, and you're going to become out of this thing better. And and they were right. And there was times I questioned that. I asked my sister or my dad, like, you know, you think I'm going to come out of this better? You think I'm going to be stronger? You know, do you think my kids will love me? Like, things like that, because I was uncertain. You know, I it broke my heart. You know what I mean? The whole process broke my heart and, um, and it sucked, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was a dark place. Uh, but I think when you're, I know when you're in those type of times of your life that it's better to talk about it and to talk to people you trust and who aren't going to judge you or laugh at you or be jealous of you or something like that. People that are real. And that's when you know who right. your real friends and family are. No, that's what I love about this stuff, too, because I feel like it's only became or it's only recently where I feel like people talk about things that whether it's bothering them or things about they've gone things that they've gone through in life. I feel like until recently, um, even 
even stuff like this, even the podcast, you know, people are always holding stuff in, man, woman, no matter who you are, you know, they don't want to say things that might relieve that pressure or that stress, you know, from them. And once you do find a good support group or a family member or friends or anybody who is truly there for you, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's, again, like we said before, it's one of the most important things in life. Yep. You know, I can't imagine, again, not having anybody to, to rely on when going through dark times like that. Yeah. Um, and there's always a situation to where somebody has it worse. Yeah. Always. And it's hard to think about that because you're in such a bad place mentally, you know, to where it's tough. It's tough to bring you out. That's why I agree that support staff is tremendous when it comes to just yeah. the healing Switching. process of it. But, yeah. but, but at the end of the day, we're all creatures of habit, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. based off of if, if, we, if we want a different result or we want to be a different person, it's a part of just reprogramming your brain, right? Because yeah. we do things over and over and over where it just becomes a habit, yep. right? So if we want to be different people, we got to change our habits. Exactly. Yep. And Jeff said it great on the last podcast, just like you just said. Somebody always has it worse, you know, so no matter what you're going through in life, mm -hmm. it could be the worst thing in the world to you. And maybe it is, mm -hmm. you know, the worst thing that's ever happened between people that you're around in life, but somebody always has it worse. And mm -hmm. when I start to think that, that really allows me to realize, like, stop complaining about what I'm complaining about. Mm -hmm. Not that it's not a real problem. You know, we all handle our stuff differently. So you complain yeah. about you complaining. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's, <laughs> right. We always sit there and dwell on things that happened in the past or, yep. you yep. know, he said, she said, or it should have been this way. It could have been that way, you know, but life, life can't be that way. You can't just dwell and say, I should have done this. No, do it now. Yep. You know, learn right. from it and, and build and it's grow. It's not tomorrow. It's now. I feel like everybody always talks about, you know, I'm going to do this tomorrow or do this next week. No, do yep. it now and grow from it and, and accomplish everything that you know life has to offer yep. you know this life i feel like once i realized i'm getting into this business that i got into 10 years ago or whenever it was it took me a few years to realize that life has and and not that it started from business but life has so much to offer mm -hmm. you know it's not about money but for for certain people and i feel like or i truly believe that you know the reason that i love doing what we do like in 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 the business of money is because money allows you to create a life that, whether it's financial freedom, you get to do things with your family, with mm -hmm. your children. I feel like people sometimes get the wrong, you know, to go on to a different subject, they get the wrong, or they might think that you think about money the wrong way, but I feel like money creates, again, f like I said, freedom, and freedom is what allows you to live the life that we all want to live, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about how much money do you have. It's about money creates experiences. Money allows you to, to again, do stuff with, with your children, with your family, to give back to people, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to help people that might not be in the situation fortunate. that you're in. Yeah, yeah as fortunate sure. as you. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I, I, I love what we do. I love that the businesses that we're in give us the opportunity, yeah. you know, to accomplish anything, right. you know, in life monetarily, yeah. you know, forget family. That's number one. Mm -hmm. That'll never change, but family and health, yeah, family, family and health, health is always yeah. number one, yeah, yeah. you know, but to be also in a position in business where you can kind of eat what you kill and create your own opportunity. You know, I love that for, you that know, drive. my family, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. drive, yeah, you know, cool. that drive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know in my darkest times too, um, and I'm not like a crazy religious person. You know, I was brought up Catholic and yeah. did uh, my communion and confirmation. My kids are going through it. But um, <clears throat> when I was in the darkest places, I talked to God a lot, you know, and that could be in the bathroom. That could be at night before I went to bed and I was having a tough time sleeping or something. But, you know, and sometimes I kneeled at the bed and sometimes I just laid there or whatever. And, and I still do, you know, when I, when I wake up in the morning before, you know, the alarm goes off and I, I'm excited to go to the gym and stuff and, you know, start my day off right, win the morning, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I say a prayer, you know, and I'm, I'm first thankful that I'm healthy. Uh, my kids are healthy. My, my wife, my final wife's healthy. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, start the day, you know, and then I count down five, four, three, two, one, and get your ass out of bed, you know, and, and go uh, make some coffee. You know, I'm thankful I could walk down the hallway, yeah, of course. Hit, the, hit the button on the coffee pot, make a cup of coffee, yeah. put my clothes on, get to the gym. I, I, I plug into my podcasts yeah. and ready to go. It's amazing you said that because my best friend, Jared, who we also work with, he said on the last episode, you know, he, he spoke about talking to God. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes people always look for 
not the wrong answer, but they think that it's just going to happen. You know, no, you have to stay consistent with, you know, talking to God and manifesting the things that you believe in, the things that you want to happen, you know, to you and your family and life or whatever it is. And then eventually over time, those things will probably happen, mm -hmm. you know, but if you don't put the work in and if you don't do the things that you need to do on a daily basis and stay consistent, they're probably not going to happen. Right. You know, right. so I, I, I love that. I feel like. Yeah. And I was always listening. He's, yeah. he's always listening and he's got a hell of a sense of humor. You know, so it's funny how sometimes everything works out. Yeah. And I also, too, I'm a big uh, advocate into timing's everything. Yeah, of course. You know, you could go, you can go and meet, you know, the woman of your dreams and be 25 years old and you're just not ready. Right. Right. right? Yeah, sure. And then at 35, at 35, you know, there could be that sense of just, you know, maturity. I am ready, you know, and it really comes down to whatever you want out of life. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we're all different. Right. You know, so, and also too, I'm a firm believer in, we all have different definitions of success, right? Yep. What you define as success, I might not. And just, just to give uh, a example, like my parents, my parents came from nothing, you know, lower East side. My mom grew up in a apartment to where there was a common bathroom, but there was a bathtub in the kitchen. So my mother lost both parents before she was 21. And my mother's old school. That's tough. And my mother's old school, yeah. and she's set in her ways because of that reason, right? She was she was forced, forced to, to grow, grow up, up yeah. at a young age. And we talk about a support staff. Yeah. Well, what happens when you lose both parents? Yeah. Within years. That's tough. You're 21, 21, 22, yeah. still trying to figure out life. Yeah, it's like, so, who do you go to? Yeah, yeah so, you go so to? my mom and dad, who just you know really didn't grow up with much, one of the things they did, and this was before they had me, they had a four-year plan. And what they did is every Tuesday and Thursday, they ate frankfurters and beans. It was just their routine in order to save money. And then I came during that, and they kept it up. And then my sister came two years after. So they were fortunately able to buy a house in Long Island. It's amazing. Now, my mom looks at her life now, and she thinks she's unbelievably successful. Which, if you look at where she came from... She is. She is. She is. 100%. Yeah. You know, and she's a statistic of could have lost both parents. She could have went down the wrong track, mm -hmm. doing the wrong drugs things, wrong. drugs, out, yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And she went and she stepped up. So yeah. it, just, it just shows from losing mm -hmm. her parents at a young age, you know, she's set in her ways. And God bless her, 73 years old. And when COVID hit, and they said, no. You can't work in Manhattan in the office. You got to work from home. She was pissed. I love it. She was pissed. It broke she up her wants, routine. Yep. Yeah, it, it broke up her up routine, her routine <laughs> of traveling on the railroad to a subway, counting her steps, staying active. It's amazing. Yeah. She hated it. So my mother, I love her. You know, we don't agree on everything. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that we do agree on is work ethic and working hard. You know, and you can, get, you can get out of life. Whatever you put into it. That definitely you know? showed you because you became a powerhouse, you know, in the mortgage industry. You know, what was that time where it really clicked for you where you're like, all right, I, I need to become successful? Like, did you did you see success the first couple of years in the business? Or what was like that real turning point? No, because... Was it a relationship you met? Like, what, what was that turning point in, in I business? Would, I would say when I got into it, you know, it was just, it was just <clears throat> made to be as it was just easy to make money. Yeah. Those days were different. The subprime era. There were a lot of uh... lending money to Tony, the dog. <laughs> Correct. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. As long as he has ID, <laughs> right? You know. But um... does he have a pulse? <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. So back back then, it was just kind of like misleading. Yeah. When I first got into it, to like, oh, okay, it was it, it was almost the majority the majority of people who just walk in can can get a mortgage. Right. You know. So. You were just kind of taught that, oh, yeah, things are easy. Just make 200, 300 calls a day, and you'll make thousands and thousands of dollars, and then that'll turn into tens of thousands of dollars and then hundreds. And it was just, it, it was just, it was just a big eye-opening experience when I was laid off in December of 2009 because then after that, going through six months of just trying to figure things out, right. you know, yeah. and your support staff telling you you should get a real job, you know, it just, it was... 
it was more or less like, hey, if you don't if you don't have anything positive to tell me, then I would just prefer that you just didn't call. Yeah. So so it got to that point when I was 25. When I was 25, I had a great mentor, and they were like, you want long term success in this business? It's all about relationships and networking. So I took it seriously, and I remember till this day that on Sundays, on Sundays at times, right, I would go out, go out with my friends and just hang out. Yeah. And just hang out, go out, have fun. And Mondays I could stroll in late, you know, stroll in 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And then I remember him challenging me, and he told me, hey, listen, you don't have to come in on Mondays. I know you prefer not to. And when you're ready, then we'll sit down. And I remember being like, what is this, some kind of re- reverse psychology? I think is he kind of calling me out? Yeah. So then what I do, every single Monday morning, I made sure to show up on time or early. So it really took him calling me out on yeah. kind of being like an immature kid at yeah. like yeah, at, at that 24, 25 to at 25. Psychological, yeah, at yeah. 25, I kind of was like, wow, he doesn't think I could just show up every Monday? <laughs> Mm. I don't care if I was hungover. I don't care what yeah. happened. It was just, it became a part of my routine. Yeah, right, of course. Right now. So I would say 20, 25 is when I had a great mentor, and then I got into networking, and it took probably about like 12 to 16 months, and then it all popped. And business just started flowing when I was 26 into 27. Just, uh, you know, that's, that's when to me I was like, wow, I'm going to be successful at this. And I continued to believe in myself, yeah. even when others didn't. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's the most challenging part sometimes in business or in life when you hear from family members or friends or somebody that's close to you mm-hmm. that, oh, you should do something different or get a real job, like you said, or any anything along those lines because they don't always understand. And I feel like sometimes those are the biggest success stories. It's when they told you, hey, you shouldn't do that right. or don't do this, right, right. you know, 5, 10, 15 years, however long it takes from that point, you know, that person crushes it they in, do it in, yeah, in sure. life yeah. you know so it's a it's always amazing to hear those stories because what if you listened you know and got a different job back then who knows where life would be who knows now? probably wouldn't be here what, what would you be doing man i can't even ima- i can't imagine you just maybe dancing but that's right yeah, <laughs> i can't yeah. imagine you doing dancing with the stars, <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's not a bad route <laughs> not, not a bad route not a bad route you're right, right. Yeah, yeah. oh man that's awesome um i know we were talking about and just to kind of finish up the episode, you know, in a, in a little bit, yeah. you know, when your back's against the wall, you know, and you've shown that going through a time like 2009, and even, you know, you started to mention this last year, year and a half in the business, was that when you were saying the second time? Because this yeah, it's last just, year or two has been it, challenging. It's just, Different. you know what it is? It's slower. I feel like we're in a blessed position with our yeah. network yeah. around us and our relationships to where we're fortunate enough to where the business still comes in, just yeah, yeah. not at the pace right. That it was, and especially especially when we went through a high of highs yeah. with COVID yeah. and rates at historic lows. But what goes up must come down. What goes down must go up. And we know interest rates kind of, I think, already hit that peak. Yeah. You know, so right right now, right now, I think we're in a perfect position to where, you know, we're we're going to have the ability to earn. Yeah. And help a lot of families in the yeah, process. I, lo- I love it. Is there is there something, because I know for myself there is, is there something you would do different? Because we know that life is cyclical. And especially in the business of money, you know, things are good, like you said, and things become challenging at certain points. You know, when a time like this does happen again, because we all know that at some point, whether it's in three years, in five, ten years, whenever it is, and the market does become challenging, once it gets easier again, is there something you would do different? Because I know for myself, I wouldn't have took my foot off the gas, mm-hmm. you know, because I definitely became a little complacent, not just during COVID. Before COVID, we were successful. I feel like we had that couple of years, even before COVID. Like when I got in the business, or when I got licensed in 2017 into 18, rates weren't, rates weren't 3%. Rates were 5 6 6.5%, I remember, when I got in the business you know, in 18 or whatever, 17, when I got Still licensed. very low. Yeah, so we had a couple of years of just downward rates, you know, and then COVID happened. Mm-hmm. So it's like we had, or I had, you know, five or six years of rates trending downward. And I feel like once we did hit that peak during COVID, where the business was just coming in, you know, I got complacent. You know, I tried doing different things within my business that, you know, maybe that's not what I should have done. Or maybe... You know, 10 years from now, I'll, I'll be like, all right, you know, thank God I did something like that. You know, but what's something that you would say to 
maybe somebody, you know, even you, I know you've seen tremendous success in, in the banking business. You know, what's some advice you would give to a young entrepreneur or, you know, somebody looking to get, you know, into the world that we're in, you know, sales, yeah. well, you know, to, to avoid going through, not that you could avoid going through challenging times, but to really prepare yourself to not have to get out of the business when things like that happen because right. most people have to leave the business. You're right. What I would say is as far as where I'm at right now, and if I could tweak a few things from the past, right, just in hindsight, yeah. for me personally, and it's just the way I was raised just to, you know, uh, shoot for the stars, yeah. but also live within your means yeah. and be conservative. I now, right. now, as far as certain lifestyles that we want to have, yep. you can't be conservative, right? And then, and then it comes down to just taking risk. Yeah. And that's that's the big thing to where if I could preach anything, don't have that fear of not going to that next level just because people are telling you no, don't do that, you should do this instead or just just having that fear from just if it doesn't work out. You know, you got to believe in yourself and I would just say it's important to take those risks because when you do take those risks that's what can really impact your life and also allow you to just feel more fulfilled. Exactly. Nick, you're a perfect example if you want to talk about it. I know that you came to me personally and a few other people that are close to you when it came to you making a move from one bank to another. Yeah. You needed to take a big risk in order to do that. You know, Do you kind of stay in your lane and just, and just kind of maximize whatever you can do in your current situation? For most people. Or, right, right. or... Or do you go and dive into that next new venture, not knowing what the re not knowing what the Correct. results are going to be? Yeah, yeah. There's no guarantees, unfortunately, yeah. and you gotta really um, take the leap, you know. And change is good. Change is good. Um, for me, I, I am a loyal guy. I'm not a type that would jump around to different companies after one year, two years. My shortest bank. I was there for four years, and I liked the people. I learned a lot. My boss was a great guy, um, but I got this opportunity came to me, and, and I was recruited. It wasn't like I was actively looking to leave, and you know I wanted to grow, and I wanted sure. to make more money and to learn more, and where I was... I felt kind of um, crippled a little crippled bit, a little bit and, and kind of flat, yeah. kinda flat, like I was kind of hitting the ceiling too much. And when I feel like that and I feel like claustrophobia, yeah. I got to make a move. A you know what I mean? Like I'm in a cage. And, um, you know, I, luckily, thank God, I've never been laid off. I've never been asked to leave a job. Thank God. I'm very thankful for that. And I've always worked hard. And that, that work ethic was instilled in me at a young age by my parents yeah. and my dad. And, you know, and... um. Yeah, you have to have the courage and the confidence to say, no, no, I'm going to do this and it's going to be great and I'm going to show them who I am, you know, and sometimes you're going to, you're going to have those doubts and you, and I still have doubts and, you know, I talk it through myself in my head and I, I movement is great. If you're not moving, you're dying, you know, you got to get up in the morning, you got to move your body. Routine is and, so important. You know, like. but, yeah. but releasing that like I, I i'm not a guy that could sit at my desk and talk on the phone i gotta get up i take a walk and i'm talking and i'm not trying to interrupt anybody i, I dip into an office you know but i can't sit still like that yeah. for longer than like maybe 10 minutes you know which was very tough for me when trying to pass the series seven because it's a six hour <laughs> test it's a six hour test and when i passed that was a, a registered rep stockbroker you know that was a great accomplishment but uh just sitting for that was a great accomplishment because i'm not i'm more of an energetic <laughs> guy i like to move did you ever you think know, but uh what, one thing i wanted to say too in downturns and market and being prepared yes you have to have that savings that cushion to get you through very important to have um but also you never want to be out of sight out of mind and that's one thing i admire about mike is he started the um pod the uh you know the instagram and the social media and exactly. you know uh Posting, post, 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 and consistency and educational, and you throw a funny one out there, you know, which is great. The dancing and giving value you know, to the people out there, giving value yeah, to people. Because guess what? Everybody gets up in the morning, they pick up their cell phone. What's on Facebook? What's on Instagram? Mike dancing. What's on TikTok? <laughs> no, they're doing that, you know. And one of my goals as a as a business banker. Yep. Which I haven't g accomplished yet is to be that guy on social media, 
you know, I would, I'm going to have to take some dance classes to, <laughs> to learn how to dance. But, um, you know, I want to give educational exactly. information to business owners. And I want to say we connect. tried that. We tried that. We tried uh, the moonwalk. With your wife and a friend yes. uh, in your kitchen. Yes. And that didn't go over too well. No, no. I, I was a little bit intoxicated. <laughs> but uh, I thought I was doing good. I thought I was. So I like that. But, you, uh, so you believe in the personal brand thing, which I like. Because a lot personal of people, branding. I love that. Yeah, a yeah. lot of people and, and don't it, truly believe how important. Or believe how important that is, that is you know, yeah, in, in this yeah. generation. That shows people who you are, yeah. both your brand and business and your brand as personal, as exactly. friends and, you know, out to dinner, whatever, you know. But uh, the goal is never to be out of sight, out of mind. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, that's, sure. that's Absolutely. Goal. Now, Dean, you brought up as far as how, you know, routine is important. So when did you officially start going to the gym. I got uh I got a question followed up by one more. When did you officially start with the routine? That's a good question. Um Paul Park it. Probably four or five months probably five months ago. Now um five or six months ago. Now you could have you could have felt bad for yourself right. with whatever you were going through and said, I'm gonna do it for the new year. Two thousand twenty four. But you didn't wait. No. And that's the thing. A lot of people just create the excuse of, oh, no, in the new year, I'm going to change it. Right. If you want to change it, do it now. Yeah, if you're going to wait for the new year, you're probably never going to do it. Um, Consistently. Are there things that people say, like, all right, I'm going to start this, you know, as my new year's we resolution. We all do it. That's we all do it. With yeah. it. I'm sure there are people. You know, there's things that I started before the new year that I wanted to implement into my routine that I finally became consistent with, like the gym. And then there were some things that I kind of held off until the new year that I said, all right, I'm going to do this now. Right. Because... You know, what, what I've realized is is it's hard to try to be like that perfect person and fix everything at once. No. So yeah. if you can slowly implement those, right. you know, those important qualities or wins. whatever it is. Wins. Yeah, yeah, wins into your routine Smaller or wins. into your business. Yep. You know, those small wins Build will up. turn into massive success. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I started probably five or six months ago. You know, it's something that for the last, you know, 10 or 15 years of my life that... I would always try. I would join a gym. I would go. I would stop after a day or two, three days because if you don't see results sometimes right away, you stop. And I was never like that in business, you know, but for some reason in my personal life, you know, and a gym was a big part of it, you know, I was never able to stay consistent. So finally, Jared, we, we ended up going to the gym because I finally woke up one day and I said, you know, I have to change this. You know, I'm slacking in all these other avenues of my life. You know, my eating habits, uh, my routine, or whatever the case may be. So let me at least do something I can control. Mm -hmm. And waking up every morning and going to the gym is something you can control. Mm -hmm. So once I started focusing on the things I can control, mm -hmm. you know, that's what really made me realize, you know, I should have been doing this a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And it kind of allowed me to realize that you could do that with anything now. You yeah. know, if you can build consistency, you know, in your business you know, that'll lead to your personal life. Yep. You know, if you can build consistency in your personal life, you know, that'll lead to success in all other avenues of life. Yeah. You know, because just having that routine and being disciplined, yeah. you know, that'll yeah. create the results. And, and if I could add to that, Dean, yeah. one thing, I know you're a big believer in mindset and yeah, building yeah. on your mindset. One thing I learned is it's not, I have to do this. Exactly. It's, I get to do this, exactly. you know, and, and you're lucky that you have legs and yeah, arms that you can work out some people where don't. some people are in a wheelchair, you know what I mean? So you have to change that mindset like, oh, I have to go to work today. It sucks. No, I get to. And we all have to And, I'm, and, I'm, and it's going to be a great day. Right, right. You know, I'm going to make this day great. I don't have to do this. I, I want to do this. Right. I, would, I, would say the, I would say the average person, when Sunday is over, the average Joe looks at Monday as like a dreadful day. Oh, I love when Mondays. when a lot of times we get excited. I get excited because, because I'm be I feel like I'm behind from Friday <laughs> to Sunday. Even though we're working, our phones on, right. we're doing whatever we're doing. Whether it's an open house, talking to a client, we're working. But until I'm in my environment and I know that I can control what's in front of me, which is in my office, yeah. you know something just doesn't feel right. So, yeah, that was for years. Even being new in the business ten years ago, I would love you know. Friday would happen, and then Saturday would come, and I'd be like, oh, my God, I can't wait to get to Monday mm -hmm. to get back into my environment because I am not where I want to be in life, mm -hmm. you know, even now. You right. know, mm -hmm. Sometimes when I'm not doing what I should be doing and I'm sitting there, you know, I sit there and think to myself, you know, life is flying by and life is so short. Right. You know, you have to start now. There, there's no tomorrow. Forget next year. 
you know, you have to start right now. It was funny. Uh, I was at LA Fitness last week, and you know, I was there 7 a.m. something like that, and I'm working out, and this kid is keeps like I am a young kid, probably like in his early 20s. So I went over by him and put my dumbbells back, and he's like, "Hey, man!" And I was like, "What?" He's like, "Are you the guy on YouTube always talking about investing?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> not, I was like, I know a couple things about investing, but not a lot. You know what I mean? Uh, I know more about business banking, but uh, we started talking. I was like, what, what are you investing in? And he's like, oh, he's like, I'm a day trader. This time. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. You know, and he was, pro no joke, he had like his book bag, whatever. He was, yeah. he was a cool kid, but uh, we were chatting a little bit. I I, I introduced himself, gave him my name, and then uh, he kind of ran away. I don't know if I had bad breath, but uh, he, he kind of like went about, about his business. Personal but, uh, brand is so important. Yeah, yeah, he was cool and, and a lot of people don't realize, especially nowadays and we we all get backlash you know from it a lot of the guys that put a lot of and i shouldn't say a lot of time because we don't put a lot of time into this you know we come we we connect and we we say whatever we have to say to give back and to talk about what's going on in our life and in business or whatever it is but i feel like a lot of people get backlash from focusing on social media because you might not see the immediate results right away from it right. you know it's more of a long-term play in my opinion mm -hmm. but i look at it you know, like, all right, so we're gaining traction by putting out videos and we're speaking to the audience and talking about stuff we've gone through in our life that might help somebody and that will probably help somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, so the more followers we get, the more views we get, you know, that now correlates with your business. You know, those are more people that eventually might be interested in something you have to offer. So, yep. yeah, not only does this help people by speaking about stuff that we've gone through that somebody else might be going through, it aligns with our business and yeah, it might take some time, you know, but over time, I feel like if you don't have a personal brand, you know, five, 10 years from now, you know, not that you can't be successful, um, but you're going to have a challenge, you know, being known in your market or in your industry, mm -hmm. you know, because the people that do have the brand are going to be so far ahead. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's Correct. my, yeah. that's my, and then, and then you're going to leave everybody in the dust and all those yeah. people are just going to be playing catch up, yeah. you know, for instance, I well, feel like, Wick, I feel like I'm catching up, you know, like, it, yeah. like I missed the wave, but uh, one of the things, one of the things that I know you and I have discussed before you started this yeah. podcast and this studio, I know that we spoke about it a bunch of times yeah. and sure enough, you know, you put your money where your mouth is. And now you got a beautiful studio, mm -hmm. and now we have the ability to do this and share certain clients and yeah, yeah, and sure and and give value share. to the people Absolutely. around you yep. and in your life and share the good and the bad, right. you know, because if they know Mike's a mortgage guy already. They don't know yeah. some of the stuff that you're speaking yeah. about today, though, which is nice. Mm -hmm. You know, they know that we do mortgages already, so sure. they go on a different connect on a personal level. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And level. and out of everything that we've all said, just in this in this one you know hour. If it helps one person, to me, yeah. it's worth it. Yeah, you serve. I that feel person. like that's awesome. You know, I could, you know, I could, I could wake up if I, if I could wake up and know that, you know, it really helped one person overcome something, or just kind of hit them with the, I'm not alone. You see, other successful, other successful people, or whether you're not successful, you know, it's okay. Exactly. But it's all about you. Right. It's about the choices you all make. About, correct. The choices you make. Yep, I love I love the personal development journey. It's it's been something that I've focused on recently, and to help other people start their journey, and you know, not just not that you're making them do that, but to be a person that somebody might look at, like, okay, you know, he went through that, so that's okay for me to feel that way or go through that in my life. You know, that 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 means a lot to people and to myself. So it's nice to, again, come here and again speak about some of the stuff that we speak about because it's not just you know your business and that's what people they know us by our business already so to go a different or to come from a different angle you know is nice to uh you know to give back to everybody so yeah. if there's anything else you want to throw in you know we could uh finish this up i, I appreciate you mr nikki chase Jeez. you know coming on the uh on the episode today and uh you know hopefully in the future we could definitely you know get together or get together again and and do this and yep. mr mike Sambala, mastering your mortgage with mike I appreciate you taking the time to, you know, sit down with us and, you know, speak about some of the stuff that you've gone through. Love being here. Thanks, yeah. Dean. All right, appreciate gentlemen. It. Thanks, Dean.